Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. So, we gotta get these potatoes put up. If you remember from previous videos, um, our potato harvest was awesome this year. We actually had some uh, we got rid of to some neighbors and things. Um, but now it's time to put them up for storage for winter, and we're gonna show you how we do that. We don't put them up right away. You want to let them cure out in the air. You don't have to do it as long as we did it. I mean, a couple of weeks um, away from sunlight. But we've got this old horse barn down here that where Andy usually keeps his truck. And there's some old stalls. And so we keep our potatoes in one of these dark stalls back in here. Yep. So what we're going to do first is we did have some go bad on us. And that's to be expected. So we're gonna throw those out. And what we've got left here, this is what's left from what we got. We've sold a lot. Y'all might remember this was up level here. So we've given away and we sold a ton of potatoes, but we've had several that went bad in here. I will say that had we had a spot where we could store these like flat, so they wasn't laying on top of each other, we probably wouldn't have had as much as this right here happens. But this is just the best we got. So, um, man, it's amazing. That potato weighs nothing now. <laughs> but anyways, we're just gonna throw the rotten ones in the basket here and then uh, um, put the rest in here. And we'll show you what we're gonna do in there when we get that far. I'm glad he didn't go bad. <laughs> That's a nice one. And what I do as far as uh, bringing potatoes in the house to cook, I've got, um, a little box that I keep them in. And so what I'll do is I'll come down here and fill me up about a half five gallon bucket and fill back up my box at the house. That way I have potatoes at the house to cook and I don't have to come down here every time I want to cook potatoes. Now, I see so many bad ones, let's just pick back. people ask me when we were getting these potatoes up do you really eat that many potatoes so guys if you're new to the channel or had not been around long you know we grow most of our own food if we don't have it we don't eat it that's kind of pretty much how most of it goes besides some fruit and things like that so yes <laughs> the short answer is yes we will put a good hurting on most of these potatoes but also we keep enough to plant for next year so we don't have to buy seed potatoes. Uh, that seems to work out real good for us. We've done it the last two or three years, just replanting what we already have and still getting a good crop. Um, that saves us a little money. And, you know, that's one, one, one less person we have to depend on is somebody to have seed potatoes. So uh, we're gonna get these in this stall. So you can see, I mean, like I said, this is an old horse barn. This is used to be a stall here. There's the trough. Um, that Andy, Andy's grandpa built this. Reckon when he built it, Andy? A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, so we use, a, use these stalls for storage. <clears throat> it's not in the greatest of shape anymore, honestly. But I hope y'all can see this because it's pretty daggone dark back in here, which is what you want when you're storing potatoes. Yeah, I've got my phone stuck up there. Hopefully it gives us a little light. Yeah. So we're doing this a little different this year. Before, we've had these bins and uh, crates and stuff like that, and we just set the potatoes in here and wrap them up um, just to keep the light off of them and everything else. This Last year, we had a problem with our potatoes freezing because we got down extremely cold last year, which is not quite that normal for us to stay that cold for that long. We were down in the teens for yeah like a few days was like yeah two degrees <laughs> and we had a lot of problem with uh, in those bins the outside potatoes froze and they ended up rotting on us so this year i've got this burlap sack here which this is an old tobacco sack 
and I've got it laid out and we're just going to lay the potatoes over on it and then well, that way it just kind of keeps them separated from the ground and there's some holes and stuff across the bottom here that this will hopefully hold them from rolling out but um we're just going to pour them on the top of this sack and then cover them back up with more burlap sacks and i've even got a couple bales of straw out here that um i'm just going to kind of set around them once we're done with it all and maybe that keeps them insulated enough that they're uh that they don't we don't have that problem this year honestly i hope it don't get down that cold again this year <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but um, it killed more than just the potatoes <laughs> yeah anyways so we're going to bring a couple of buckets in here and see how this is going to work i'm afraid they're just going to roll out everywhere and not stay on the sack but um i'm gonna give it a try well, this first bin right here let's see what's going to happen Oh yeah, that'll work. So y'all, you don't have to have a dark barn um, under your house or in a back closet or anywhere that don't get light that's not exactly hot, but you don't want it to get too cold either. But you know, this is kind of what we've got to work with. We used to keep them under our, under our house. We have like a, a dirt floor basement and it worked great. They, they kept excellent down there. But I think it was actually just a little bit too warm down there because they would always end up sprouting. Yeah, they would sprout way too early. So we started putting them down here and we kind of eliminated the sprouting issue, but we had an issue of them freezing last year. But but now the the ones that actually kept, we had potatoes up until what, April? We ate potatoes until we planted the potatoes. Yeah, so like April, May, because, something like that. Yeah, so I mean, the ones that didn't freeze and rot, uh, we were we were still eating on the potatoes from the year before up until April or May. So they did keep better down here because I wasn't getting them that long. I would keep them till about February in my basement, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. they start shriveling up, wouldn't they? Yeah. I think it might have actually been too high humidity down there or something. I don't know. But anyways, I think this is going to work. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. What we're going to run into is we're going to ride our room. Let's go get some more. All right. So in our last potato video, when we got these potatoes up and we were throwing away a lot of the ones with the green on them, everybody was saying, keep those for your seed stock next year and all that. Um, I'm just going to tell you straight up, y'all. I've grown potatoes all my life. And my parents have grown potatoes all their life. And I grow potatoes all my life. And Megan's gro <laughs> Megan, even Megan's grown potatoes all her life. We throw away the ones with green on them because they don't keep. And if you did lay this to the side, it would, it's like, so right there, everyone's got just a little bit of green on. It's not bad though. But that spot always ends up turning softer than the regular potato. And so by next spring, when it comes time to replant it, you're going to have a big old pile of rotten potatoes. Now this is in our experience. Somebody else may have totally different experience with this. But y'all, for us, they don't keep. The green potatoes are getting thrown away. Um, and I promise you, out of all of these little potatoes, these little potatoes like this, like we won't just, these will be the last ones we eat. And so we'll have like probably a ton of these left over. And that's what we'll replant next year. And when you got the little ones like this, you don't have to cut them up quite as much either. But um, I just wanted to add that in there because. I have seen several YouTube channels say they keep their green potatoes till next year. Now, maybe they know something I don't know. Um, but that's just in our experience. We don't keep green potatoes. Um, we have way too many good potatoes to worry about keeping the green potatoes. And like I said, just in our experience, they don't keep. Um, give me your thoughts on that because somebody else may have totally different experience with that if you have actually kept green potatoes all year long i mean all winter long to replant let me know in the comments and let me know if it actually worked but i'm just telling you from our experience they do not keep 
and you would end up with a big old pile of mess of rotten potatoes. I mean, you might have 25% of them keep and the rest, the, the other 75% are just rotten nastiness all over your potatoes and, you know, I don't want to deal with a bunch of nasty rotten potatoes. Anyways, like I said, I just want y'all's opinion on that. If you've actually kept green potatoes all winter long, let us know in the comments and let us know how it worked. This is the length at the end of them. That's a lot of potatoes. Yeah, it is. It looks like more when they're not in containers. I think this is going to work just right for what I want it to do. Cause I'll be able now to pull that down and uh, sort of keep them contained. Look at that. Now we'll wrap them up. So using burlap, y'all, allows the sun not to hit the potatoes, which like I said, not much sun comes in here anyways. But it allows the sun not to hit the potatoes, but it still breathes. I um, mean, yeah, like I said, these are old tobacco sacks, which is what we used many, 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 many years ago when we used to uh, raise tobacco. And this is what you would uh, put the tobacco in to haul it to market. But um, nowadays, we just use them for things like this. And uh, so if you don't have tobacco sacks, I'm pretty sure you can actually buy rolls of burlap on Amazon. I mean... You can buy them at Rural King. Can you? Mm -hmm. So you can get burlap anywhere. Um, but uh, I think burlap works excellent for this kind of stuff because like I said, it breathes and it's dry and it just keeps the sunlight off of them. So now what I'm gonna do is since this side over here is the one most likely to get sun, let's see. Which when I close that door, that cuts a lot of that out. But I'm just gonna set this bale of straw right on top of them there, just like that. I think I'll use the rest of these pine needle bales and we'll put them around it. All right. Get a good up close look at this. I hope it's not too much piled on top of them, but they should still actually be able to breathe fairly well through all that. We don't have them packed on there. Yeah, they're not packed, but they're they're loosely laid on there. I believe that's going to work this year because now it has the ground insulating it on the bottom. And this ground here is like probably a foot of just dry hay that's laid there. Because we used to use this to store hay several years ago. So the floor is just dry hay. And then we've got the sacks over them and these bales of straw. I think that'll work pretty good. It's gonna be a lot of work when you come to actually get the potatoes out. Well, that's why I don't just get what I need for that right, day. Right, right, yeah. yeah. But I believe it's gonna work really well. Hopefully it works better than it did last year. So I've seen several ways y'all of keeping potatoes and stuff. Um, I even seen on a really, really, really old video, it was like an old TV series called the Heartland series. Um, and it was filmed in like the Eastern Tennessee. And this old man, took and piled his potatoes up outside and then covered them in dirt 
Well, no, he covered them in straw and then put a dirt over top of them. And he had him a little hole dug out. And so he would reach up in that pile of dirt and grab him out a couple of potatoes. And he said they kept all year like that. Never, never had a problem at all. So I've actually wanted to try that, but I'm kind of scared to. It just seems, I don't know. I don't like the fact that they could get wet. Because you know if they're in a pile of dirt, water's going to seep down through that dirt and they'd end up getting wet. But I don't know. You know, them old timers know stuff, and he was an old timer. He and that's how he said he kept his all winter. But um, anyways, we'll go back out here and we'll see how many we actually had go bad. These are actually going to go. These few red potatoes here are going to go straight to the house. So I want to give you all a tip on planting potatoes, so you'll know for next year. Um, don't plant many red potatoes. So like if you're planting a big patch like we do, don't plant that whole patch of red potatoes unless you're planning on selling them or whatever, getting getting them gone really quick. Because red potatoes, I don't care what kind of red potato, at least in our experience, do not keep that great. Like these potatoes are beautiful potatoes, but they're already soft and all of them are that way. And we've had that experience in the past. That's why we only plant like a half a row of red and a half a row of yellow. We have the same problem with the yellow. But out of all these potatoes that were in this trailer, these are the ones that were either completely bad or questionable. So I think that's actually pretty good. That's a little less than a bushel. That's a bushel basket, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a little less than a bushel. And uh, then these potatoes right here are all gonna go up for canning potatoes. And then right behind you here is a bucket of yellow potatoes. These are Yukon Golds. And then there was a couple that like this one that had been laying against the rotten potato. So, you know, the outside skin's all nasty and rotten, but the potato itself's actually good. So we're gonna take that one up to the house as well and go ahead and be eating that. But um, that'd be my advice. Like if you want potatoes that are gonna store for a really long time, you wanna plant white potatoes. Um, like these are Kenny Becks and they store great. Our red potatoes, we actually, that's the only potatoes we'll probably buy next spring. If we have to buy red potatoes, we have to buy yellow potatoes because we either eat them up or they just simply don't store all winter long. Um, yeah, they'll be rotten by next year when we go to plant them. Yeah. They, if we have any left. We do have a few left that we do we have planted before, but not very many because they don't last. Um, and the yellow potatoes too. The yellow potatoes don't seem to get soft, but they always seem to, to sprout very, very early, just like these. See there? And they were kept the exact same way as the white ones. Yeah, and the you white know. ones have no sprouts. Right. Um, but now that potato still feels pretty solid. So, I mean, it's not going soft or anything. But by next spring, it would probably have shoots on it that long. And the potato would be all nice and shriveled up. It wouldn't be able to be eat. So, uh, that's why we always plant it like a half a row of yellow and a half a row of red. And then the rest of them are white potatoes. Because the white potatoes keep. Um, I don't know why either. You think a potato is a potato, it would... I think it's the starch and the sugar content or You something. know, it may be, sure enough. Yeah. I had never thought about that. Because I know red potatoes are different than white potatoes as far as that goes. I don't know the technicalities, but... Hmm. Well, anyways, we're going to see if this works. I have a feeling it's going to work. Um... And like I said, if, if we don't get an extremely cold winter, it'll work anyways. But um, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We don't have that this year, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I want to give y'all a quick update, too. If you've stuck around long enough to watch the video this far on the goldenrod, uh, while I'm thinking about it, speaking of the cool weather. So if you remember the date, August the 5th, back when we were out in the field, talking about that goldenrod blooming so early. So we are about six weeks from that date. And it didn't predict the first frost, but it predicted this cool down we're having. We have had a major, major cool down. Like one day it was 5,000 degrees and the next day you're out here shivering. So, And it looks like in a foreseeable forecast yeah. it's going to stay this way. And you know, the goldenrod bloomed twice. 
so now it's in full bloom again, or it has been for a while now. What did mm -hmm. we say that was? September the 5th. Yeah, and that would put the frost being... In October. The end of October. Yeah, which would be about right for us. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so it did, you know, it predicted this cool down, and we don't... Today's the first day of fall. You won't see this on the first day of fall, but today is the first day of fall. And it never feels like fall here no, on the first day of does. fall, but it does today. <laughs> it really does. It's, it's an amazing cool down. I, I, I love it. It's nice. But, um, yeah, this, uh, I, I wonder if that had anything to do with it or if that's just a weird coincidence um, that it did pretty much predict, like dead on, predict this major cool down that we're having. Um, maybe something we'll have to pay attention to from year after year and make notes of all this stuff and just see. But, um Anyways, let's get the rest of these, these potatoes here up to the house. I've got to get the floor of this trailer here cleaned out because we've got to have it to pick our corn. And uh, we've got to take advantage of this break in the rain because it's supposed to be more rain coming in later this evening. So we got to get okay, at it. Hey guys, since we're talking about storing potatoes, I want to show y'all real quick how I store them in the house. So this is a tater box here. And here's where I keep my potatoes. And I keep this uh, little tea towel over them just to keep the sun, I mean, any light off of them because I have had them turn green in here. These are our, the fingerling potatoes we got out of our raised beds here a while back. I'm still eating on those. But once my box gets empty, I'll go down there and fill it up again. That'll hold uh, about a five gallon bucket full, maybe a little more. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope y'all learned a little something about storing your potatoes. Um, potatoes are an excellent resource to have, uh, because the, you know, they keep without really any effort, um, pretty much besides making sure they don't get any light and they don't freeze. So anyways, guys, let us know in the comments what you think, how y'all do it. And we're always looking to learn, learn new tricks. And, uh, anyways, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.